Jeremiah chapter 40. And the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. I keep saying from the Lord, from the Lord. No, Nobody, nothing else but God. After that Nebuchadnezzar, I mean, yeah, Nebuchadnezzar, the captain of the guard had let him go for a moment. When he had taken him being bound and chained among all that were carried away captive in Jerusalem and Judah, which were carried away captive into Babylon. So Jeremiah was among the captives. And the captain of the guard, never Zedan, oh, stop. Give me that man there. And the captain of the guard took Jeremiah and said unto him, Now Jeremiah is going to get a message from a Babylonian man. This Babylonian captain of the guard, Nebuchadnezzar, is going to affirm 38 chapters of Jeremiah in three verses. He's going to affirm everything that Jeremiah said. He says, The Lord thy God has pronounced this evil, being taken captive, city destroyed, the temple destroyed, upon this place, Judah and Jerusalem. Now the Lord has brought it. Look, he's not even giving credit to the Chaldeans or the Babylonians. He's saying God did all this. And done according as he has said. Well, as he has said is everything that Jeremiah said. Because he has sinned against the Lord. And have not obeyed his voice. That's everything Jeremiah has been saying. Therefore this thing has come upon you. Exactly as what God said. Now behold, I loose thee this day from the chains which were upon thy hand. Some kind of handcuffs. If it seem good unto thee to come with me to Babylon, come. And I will look well unto thee. So if you want to go to Babylon, come with me. I'll take care of you. But if it seem ill unto thee to come with me unto Babylon, you don't want to come to Babylon, forbear, don't, don't do it. Behold, all the land is before thee, it be Judah. Whether it seems good and convenient for thee to go, thither go. You can go with me, or you can stay. It's up to you. Meanwhile, remember, he's been taken out of captives. He's been taken out of uh, people who have been chained. They're going to Babylon. And they're watching this unfold. Jeremiah, you want to stay? You want to go? And I guarantee there are people in those chains that have heard Jeremiah all these years. And they're probably some of them saying, well, it gives Jeremiah the right. Who does he think he is? I think there will be people at the judgment seat of Christ. Otherwise, he get the crown. And you'll find out until you step up and get your judgment. I think they're going to be pastors that know me. And if I go before them, well, what's he get all that for? And then they're going to step up to the plate. And they're not going to get as much. I think even a ruling favor would be that some of these people that I was under, if I do get a city, I think they're going to be put under me. Hey, listen, that guy was right the whole time. You weren't right. The captives are going to Babylon. Jeremiah's, hey, want to go? Come. I'll take care of you. You don't want to? Want to stay here? Go wherever you want to go. Now, while he was not yet gone back, Jeremiah is still standing there. He said, this is the captain of the guard, Go back also to Gedaiah, the son of Ahikam, the son of Shephi, 
whom the king of Babylon has made governor over the city of Judah. So here is a governor placed in the land that should have a king that will have no more king unto Jesus Christ. And the captain of the guard says, go to the governor. You don't need to come with me to Babylon. Stay in the land. Report to get alive. And dwell with him among the people. Or, go with her so it seems convenient to need to go. Come with me to Babylon, go to Gadaliah, or go wherever you want to go. <laughs> So the captain of the guard gave him victuals, food, drink, and a reward. How's that? Babylon paid Jeremiah to preach the word of God. And let him go. 39 chapters. And Jeremiah spoke from God, and God warned the people to Jeremiah. A Babylonian comes up to him and says, Hey, you know why all this happened? And Jeremiah said, hey, God told me what happened. Because God said, you, you wouldn't obey my voice. You wouldn't do what I told you to do. Jeremiah said, I think I heard this somewhere. And then the guy gives Jeremiah three options. Come with me. Go to get Eliah, or go wherever you want to go. By the way, here's some food, here's some bread, here's some water, here's a reward. Bye. Then went Jeremiah unto get Eliah, the son of Ahab, came to, to Mizpah, and dwelt with him among the people that were left in the land. Now, your typical American, I'm good. that's not my president. We didn't vote for him. He stole the vote. Jeremiah honors the ruler put in hand, even though it's put there by Babylon, because God's in charge of all the government. Now when all the captains of the forces, which were in the fields, even they and their men, heard that the king of Babylon had made Gedali, the son of Ahoykim, governor in the land. And he committed unto him men, women, and children. And the poor, these are the people that obey Jeremiah's preaching. God said, if you stay in the land and surrender your, to the Babylonian army, I'll take care of you, and you'll stay in the land, and you won't go to Babylon. There's already a group of people going to Babylon that was chained with Jeremiah. Jeremiah is free. Here are people, I'm in your hand. I surrender. And they're still in the land. Pour up the land, that's Judah. Of them that were not carried away captive to Babylon. So there were people that obeyed God. And when the Babylonian army came, we surrender. Our God said to Jeremiah, if we give up, they're putting faith and trust in God. I don't think American and American Christians would do that if this was the call to the church today. And they came to Gedaliah to Mizpah, even Ishmael, watch out for that name, the son of Nethaniah, and Jehanan, Jehanan, and Jehanan, the son of Kirish, and Syriah, the son of Tanhereth, the son of Ephi, the Neobathanite, and Jathano, the son of Machlonite, they and their men. There's a group of men that are going to rebel against the government. How come the modern Bibles don't make these names easier? 
Well, there was George, there was Fred, there was Tom, there was Eric, and there was Joseph. <laughs> they don't make the... <laughs> you know, we make the modern Bible so the Bible will be easier to read. Uh, okay, change the name. See, it's it's not to be easy to be read. So these names will come back again. And we will have to say them all over again. And Gedaliah the son of Ahikam, the son of Shiphan, swear unto them. Makes an oath. That means he didn't cuss them out. Makes an oath. I swear to whatever. And to their men, verse 8, saying, Fear not to serve the Chaldeans. Dwell in the land and serve the king of Babylon and it shall be well with you. That's exactly what God said. As for me, behold, I will dwell in Mitzvah to serve the Chaldeans. And this would be uh, uh, Gedaliah. Which will come unto us. But ye gather ye wine grapes, wine, summer fruits, and oil, that would be olives, and put them in your vessels, baskets, and buckets, and dwell in your cities that ye have Go home and farm. Now I guarantee some of these crops will be for the Chaldean. They would be for the Babylon, but you get to keep some too. It would go, there would be a tax by Babylon. But you get to stay in the land. Likewise, when all the Jews that were of Moab, they took off, they ran off, when the Babylonian army came, among the Ammonites, these are the children of Lot, and in Eden, children of Esau, by the way, which the children of Eden, they gathered Jews that ran, captured the Jews, I think it's Obadiah, I think, and turned them over to the Babylonian army. And the book of Psalms says that the children of Eden, raise it, raise it, raise it, destroy what they say, destroy the city, yeah, destroy it, kill them, get them, destroy them. That's what Eden was doing. And they got so harsh with the Babylonian army, they're running to the, the people that hate them. Esau, Edom. And they were being captured by Edom. And that were in all the countries. All around the area, wherever they ran. Heard that the king of Babylon had left a remnant in Judah. Now he had set over them Gedaliah, the son of Hyakim, the son of Shiva. So, alright, the Babylonian army is not attacking no more. There's been a government set by Babylon. There are Jews in the land. Alright, let's go home. Even all the Jews returned out of the places where they were driven. And came into the land of Judah to get Eliah on the Mizpah and gathered wine and summer fruits very much. So, look what happened here. The land's been turned over to another person, a governor. They report to the governor first, say, hi, how you doing? We're Jewish people. We come from, we want to come back in the land. All right, you want us to gather wine? You want us to summer? We'll go do it. Thank you for letting us stay in our land. Now there is a rebuke and there is a rebellion and there is an uprising coming forth. But not right now. Mor Jehanham, the son of Kerith, and all the captains of the forces that were in the field came to Gedaliah to Mizpah. So Gedaliah set Mizpah as the, the governing city, where he's going to reign from. Like the governor of the states of America. If you were to have the governor of Connecticut where we come, the place he had settled would be Hartford, Connecticut. 
and you take the capitals of the 50 states, that's what would Mesbah be. And said unto him, Does thou certainly know that Baal is, knows the B-A-A-L, Baal, That Baal means Lord. The king of the Ammonites. So here's the Lord, small g-o-d, king of the Ammonites, the children of Lot, has sent Ishmael, the son of Nephi, to, sl to slay thee. There's a plot against you, Gedaliah. And Gedaliah the son of Ahikam believed them not. No. Nah. What are you saying? What? Where do you get this? And Jehanan, the son of Kariah, spanked the Gedaliah and Mizpah secretly. Come with me. We, you know we got to talk about this. Say, let me go. I pray thee, and I will slay Ishmael the son of Nathaliah. Now, Ishmael is going to kill Gedaliah later. Johanna is correct. And no man shall know it. Well, why do it secretly? If there's a plot against the governor, make it known for everybody to know and... It's not right to have it secret. You know what's wrong with the American government today? There are Democrats that get together secretly. And there are Republicans that get together secretly. And there's the media that gets together secretly. And there are church pastors that grab certain cliques of the church and they get together secretly. Why do it secretly? At no time did Jesus have anything secret. At no time did Elijah, Elijah, have anything secret. No time did Moses or Aaron do anything secretly. No time did Peter, Jane, Paul do anything secretly. Wherefore, uh, Nehemiah, the son of Nehemiah, no man shall know it secretly. Wherefore should he slay thee, that all the Jews which have gathered unto thee should be scattered, and the remnant in Judah perish? Now if they slay you, the, the, the land is going to go in disorder. It's going to go in chaos. You're so important. He's buttering the guy up. And Gedaliah the son of Ahikam said unto Johanna the son of Kara, and if you're going to make fun of me for mispronouncing these names, we will get you on a video, and we will have you begin in First Chronicles chapter one, and we will ask you to read five chapters of First Chronicles to see how well you do. I have no problem with the names. My name is Stiley. I get Stiley, Stilly, Stiley, Stilly, Stilly. How do you pronounce that? Stilly, Stiley, Stilly. They can't pronounce my name. And there are people I met, I can't pronounce their name. Oops. But Gedali, the son of Hyakin, said unto Jehan, the son of Kara, Thou shalt not do this thing. For thou speakest falsely of Ishmael. Let me tell you, the next coming chapters, Ishmael's going to kill Gedaliah. Gedaliah should have did a little more investigation. But, I don't believe what you said. That's it. That's the end of the chapter. But that's not the end of the story.